For the first time in 30 years, Japan has a new emperor. This is not because the previous emperor died, it's because he abdicated, meaning he stepped down in order to let the next person in line become emperor instead. Please note that these dates indicate the length of reign, not birth to death. So, in this video, I'm going to show you the new line of succession to the throne of Japan and introduce you to some lesser known members of the Japanese imperial family. The Japanese monarchy is special for three reasons. First of all, it's the oldest monarchy still in existence today. Second, it is the only monarchy that still uses the title emperor. And third, it has had only one dynasty, meaning that the current emperor can trace his ancestry all the way back to the beginning through an unbroken male only line. If you want to see that full line, I've actually done a separate video on the topic, which I'll link to in the description. In this video, we'll only be looking at the more recent members of the dynasty. So let's start with the current monarch, Emperor Naruhito. Now, Naruhito is his personal name, and in Japan, it's traditionally inappropriate to refer to the emperor in this way. So, in Japan, he's simply called Tenno Heika, which means His Majesty the Emperor. Now, until recently, his father, whose personal name is Akihito, was the one who held that title. But since he has now passed it on to his son, his new title is Jo Ko, which means retired emperor. Eventually, he will be referred to by the era name associated with his reign, which is Hei Sei, but this will not occur until after his death. We can look back at the previous generations for some more examples of the naming custom. The Emperor of Japan, who reigned during World War II and all the way until 1989, is generally known in the West as Hirohito, Hirohito being his personal name. However, since his death, his formal name has been Emperor Showa. Showa being the name for the era from 1926 to 1989, which is when he was emperor. So note that the era name is named at the beginning of an emperor's reign, but the emperor doesn't actually take that name until after his death. Meiji and Taisho are also examples of Japanese era names, as well as the names of these two emperors. Their personal names were actually Mutsuhito and Yoshihito. So the current line of succession to the Japanese throne is actually very short. Japan follows male only primogeniture, which means that only males can inherit the throne. Emperor Naruhito has only one child, a daughter, and therefore, if anything were to happen to him, his younger brother, Fumihito, would automatically become the emperor. His official title is Prince Akishino. Prince Akishino initially had only two daughters, Mako and Kako, and therefore, in the early 2000s, there was actually a bit of a concern over the future of the Japanese monarchy. Some felt that the rules should be changed to allow Aiko, known as Princess Toshi, to follow her father in the line of succession. But then, Prince Akishino had a son, Prince Hisahito, and therefore the pressure to change the rules lessened. So, as it stands now, this young prince, who is currently 13 years old, is second in line to the throne after his father. If for some reason his father were to die before Emperor Naruhito, he would then become the heir apparent. After Hisahito, there's technically only one other person who could become emperor, and that is the 82 year old younger brother of the retired emperor. 
His personal name is Masahito, and his official name is Prince Hitachi. So there's currently only three people in the Japanese line of succession, and it's likely that that number will soon go down to two. So there's going to be a lot of pressure on this poor guy to eventually get married and have a son. And it will probably be at least another 15 to 20 years before that happens. Now let's quickly take a look at why there are so few options in terms of the line of succession. The Emperor and Prince Akishino do have one other sibling, but she's a sister, so that rules her out. In fact, she, like other female members of the family, had to give up her title when she got married. Previously, she was known as Princess Nori. However, she does still hold an important role within traditional Japanese society. She currently serves as the supreme priestess at one of the most important Shinto shrines in Japan. If we go up one generation, you'll notice that Prince Hitachi has no children, so there are no possible heirs there. There were four other children in this generation, but they were all female. So even though some of them had male children, they are not eligible to be in the line of succession because there has to be an unbroken male-to-male -male line. Let's go up another generation. Emperor Hirohito had three younger brothers and no sisters. But the first two brothers had no children. That leaves the youngest brother, Takahito, known as Prince Mikasa. Now, interestingly, Prince Mikasa was still in the line of succession himself until quite recently. He died in 2016, just about one month before he would have turned 101 years old. He had three sons and one daughter. The three sons were all previously in the line of succession, but the three all died before their father and none of them produced any sons. So this entire branch of the dynasty has become extinct. And since Emperor Taisho was the only son of Emperor Meiji, who in turn was the only son of the emperor before him, the only branch of the family that is left is this one here. And there's currently only one small part of that branch that leaves hope that a male-only line might continue. You'd have to go back several hundred years before you found another male-only line, but all of those lines have either since died out or were deemed ineligible long, long ago. So I'll leave it up to you to debate in the comments. Should Japan change its laws in order to allow for a future Emperor Toshi? Or should it pin its hopes on a future Emperor Hisahito? Of course, the third option would be to do away with the monarchy altogether. Let me know what you think. If you find history, genealogy, and monarchies interesting, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you check the playlists, you'll find that I have videos covering the family trees of famous dynasties from all over the world. And to see what else I'm up to, follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Thanks for watching.